everyone, I'm Jessica Bryson and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to do this video. Um, I wanted to kind of sit down with you and talk about this idea of perfection. Um, I was actually in a conversation with a sister of mine. Hey, Chardet. Hey, boo. And um, this came up, but you know, this the, the conversation came up, but I have to be honest, this isn't something that um, I've heard, you know, only once or twice. This is something that I've sort of heard over the course of my life um, is that um, sometimes folks feel as though I have it all together and that I'm perfect um, or that, you know, I just do everything the right way. And I am here to tell you, let me be the first one to say, I am not perfect. I am absolutely not perfect. I make mistakes. And sometimes I don't feel as though I have it all together, right? Um, but I can say that I do take the time to do the work to sort of help my life along. So I, I, I want to be clear that um, all of us here walking this earth, whether you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or whether you work at McDonald's, we all are made up of the same stuff. We all have the same stuff. Now, how we use our stuff is how we, how we differ from one another. So that should give you a little bit of peace in knowing that, you know what, I have the exact same material as someone else has. They're just using what they have differently than what I, what I have, and now I can learn how to use what I have to get what they have, if that makes sense. So... I think there's just this huge misconception when you begin to do spiritual work, when you go to church, when you believe in God, that you're just this perfect person, right? I was not a preacher's kid. I, you know, I wasn't born into a, a family where my father and my mother was a preacher, um, but I was, I was raised in the church, um, raised in a very Baptist church where we had to wear skirts. You know, you couldn't walk into the church wearing pants. Women had to wear skirts. Um, so it was very conservative, very traditional. Um, I grew up learning um, how to go to Bible study, usher, sing in the choir, you name it. I was on every ministry in the church, okay? So I, I, I definitely learned how to do church, but it wasn't until I became a teenager and matured in my adulthood that I actually established a personal relationship with God, which was totally, totally different. And I have to say that the difference between just attending church versus having a relationship with God is like night and day. There's nothing that can compare. And so I think that I do deal with things differently now. Um, there are certain things that will come my way that if it would have came my way a few years ago, my response would have been a lot different. Um, but that's just because of doing the spiritual work. But I'm not better than anyone else. I'm not different from anyone else. I, I'm made up of the same things as everyone else. I'm just using what I have differently. So I hope that encourages you. Just use what you have differently. We all have the ability to um, connect to God and, and, and gain peace. And I think that has been the, the overall lesson of my entire life is um, journeying to peace. Um, that is the evolution or what happens when you connect with God. And as I began to connect with God personally, um, I, I had more peace. And as I have more peace, I have more peace that I can give to other people. So I think it comes off as, oh, Jessica, you just have it all together. You just figured it out. No, no, no. It's not me, honey. Because trust me, when someone says something to me, I have the same knee-jerk reaction to give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> okay? We all have those same um, desires. But that's why connecting to God is so important because when we strengthen our, our spiritual muscles and when we reach out to God and when we call out to God and when we develop a relationship with him, he helps us overcome our physical desire to get even, to um, attack the other person, or to respond um, to that person in the way that they have come to you. And so what you see is, is spiritual exercise. It, it's not, um, I was just born with everything together and I just figured it out. Um, what you see is daily work. It is 
daily sacrifice because when you decide to walk with God and have a relationship with God, you decide to sit yourself down. And sometimes that doesn't feel good because sometimes someone has said something to you and you just, you, you have a, a retort and it's going to be so good when you let them hear it. <laughs> but then God is going to, you know, kind of nudge you and say in your ear, um, don't say that. Although it will be physically satisfying to you because you, you, you gave them something sharp back and you put them in their place, he's going to say to you, that, that's not where I'm leading you. That's not where I'm taking you. And that's not who you are anymore. So what I find now is that when things happen to me that I would normally respond to um, in, a, in different ways, I'll, I'll hear. And I keep doing this because I don't, I don't know how anyone else hear God, hears God. But when he talks to me, it's like right here, like in my ear. It's right here. And um, it's so funny because... On Friday, I had an incident, and um, someone upset me, and I had the perfect thing to lay them out. Oh, I'm just going to say this, and, and it's going to get them, right? <laughs> and I said it, but you know what? It wasn't as satisfying as it would have been in the past, and I know that that's because here, God is like, you know you shouldn't have said that. You know that your negative response and energy is escalating this situation instead of de-escalating the situation. And I like to think about it, you know, I, my, mo my mom is from Georgia. Hey, to all the, Southern, all the, all the folks in the South. And uh, I, <laughs> I call myself a Southerner even though I was born and raised in Michigan and my husband hates that. He's like, just you are from Michigan. Stop saying you're a Southerner. But I, I you know, I, I had, very, had a very Southern upbringing. My mom being from Georgia, my dad's side of the family is from Mississippi. So we were, you know, I grew up on very Southern foods and um, ways of saying things and expressions. So my mom, you know, she has some great expressions that um, have really carried me through my life. And one of the things that she told me years ago was that, you know, a pig loves slop. But if you throw a lamb in a pit, they're going to try to claw their way out. Now, for a lot of people, they were like, what in the world did you just say? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what she means. A pig loves slop. So someone who is not doing the spiritual work, someone who is not communing with God on a daily basis, well, they represent the pig in this story. And so they like mess, which is the mud, the slop, you know, the dirt. So they'll roll around and do backstrokes, you know. I'm animated. Y'all know how I do. And they love mess. They love to stop. You know people like that. They love to the gossip. They love talking about people. They love going off on people. They just get a riot out of it. You know, there are just certain people who love slop. You know, they love it if they call customer service and um, they don't get what they want. They love telling them off and saying, give me to your manager and I'm going to tell everybody off up the chain. Right? In that scenario, they're the pig. And they, they like the slop, they like the mess, but the lamb. And we know that in the Bible, you know, Jesus, the, you know, we talk about Jesus being the good shepherd. And he, he calls us his lamb, his flock. And so what that means is the people who flock after Jesus, the people who follow Jesus, the people who are working on their relationship with God are the lambs. And when you become a lamb and you are thrown into mess, slop, dirt, mud, you are trying to claw out of it. You don't like the mess. You don't like the dirt. You don't like the slop. You want out. And that, that has really stuck with me because that has been my in, entire transformation. When I was the pig, you know, I, and, and some of us don't realize we are addicted to our mess. We are addicted to gossiping. We are addis, addicted to lying. We are addicted to um, anger. We, we are addicted to some of the things that we think we want to get rid of. And um, that was me. You know, I, I was, you know, people who really know me <laughs> back in the day, um, I was addicted to anger and rage. And that may seem odd to some people like, ho, oh, but you don't, unless you know me, <laughs> you wouldn't know. Um, 
So I, I definitely had the personality or the attitude of, oh, I'm cool. I'm on a zero now, but it takes nothing for me to go from zero to a hundred real quick. And when I get to a hundred, everybody along the way can have it. <laughs> okay. Everybody can get some. Okay. And it's so funny to me now because that's how I live my life. I was addicted to being angry. This person said this, this person did this, and because they did this and that and that, I'm cutting this person off or I'm, you know, whatever, right? And I was the pig and I was loving my slop. I was loving my mess. But the more that I drew to God, I began praying, um, reading scripture, meditating, listening to audios. I am the audio queen and my friends, my close friends know I always play an audio. And that's very interesting. I'll drop this little nugget. I don't listen to the radio. You know, so oftentimes people say, well, I don't have time, you know, to do that kind of stuff, praying, meditate, all that. Well, I don't listen to the radio. So the 20 minutes that it takes me to get to work every day, I'm listening to an audio. I'm saying my affirmations. I, I use the time that I have. So where else are you spending your time? So, so for other people, they're spending their time listening to the radio, which, you know, is, is mess. Um, you know, it might be a good tune, but listen to the lyrics. You know what I mean? So I don't listen to the radio. And even when I don't have an audio playing, I don't have anything on. I'm silent. And I'm, I like that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, back to my story. Back in the day, I used to go 0 to 10 real quick. Um, I, 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 I can still, you know... In the right situation, I, I can put a stream of curse words together quick. Okay, <laughs> okay. so let's just be clear. It's nothing but the grace of God. It's nothing but the grace of God that um, he's worked on me. He's pruned me. He's, he's changed my desires to where I've turned from the pig to the lamb. And so now when I find myself in mess, when I find myself in situations where this person said that to me or that person said something wrong to me or I need to go up to Verizon and let them know that they need to have it because my phone isn't working, even when I revert back to my old ways, I no longer enjoy being in the slop. And now I'm trying to claw, claw out. So before when I was a pig, I could say something sharp to someone to cut them deep, and that was very satisfying for me. Now, when I say something sharp to cut someone deep, it isn't satisfying to me. Immediately, my spirit is disturbed. Immediately, I feel like I shouldn't have said that. I did something wrong. I need to ask God for forgiveness, and if necessary, ask that person for forgiveness. So, that's what this is, folks. All of us have the same components. We have the same things making us up. The only difference is how we utilize it. Um, some of the people that I, I admire, you know, when I think about Oprah Winfrey or the Obamas, they have very strong moral compasses and character. And I know that that's a result of spiritual muscles, having very strong spiritual muscles. Um, they've done the work. And so, I'm sure, you know, during the election campaign and Obama's campaign and, and lies are being thrown about, is he a real citizen? Was he even born here? Is he tapping? You know, all this kind of stuff. I'm sure he's, stuff is thrown at him, right? But because he has strong spiritual muscles, he just doesn't respond like most people respond. He responds with wisdom. He responds with a sense of peace and calm. And he forgives and he lets go. And he's like, hey, that's their stuff. I, that has nothing to do with me. So I encourage you today, if you're the pig in my mom's story, <laughs> not calling anyone a pig, but, you know, you get the metaphor. If you're the pig in this story, I, you know, God can transform you from the pig to the lamb. So be transformed by renewing your mind. That's what the Bible says. Do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I love you. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time, take care, love.